This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This video is going to go through there and just look at two small points that we have there within the class notes, uh, looking at the returns on debt, so a bit of a recap, if you like, from the glory days of F1, uh, and then introducing just something fractionally new and which you can practice in your own time at home is looking at debt covenants and whether or not we meet that debt covenant. And we'll talk about that in, in a little bit more detail in a moment. Uh, so let's look at the returns on debt first. So the return is looking at the amount of money that you get back, isn't it, from the investor's perspective. Uh, and there's two things that, that we can look at. We can look at, first of all, the, the interest yield, which is nice and straightforward, because all we go through there is we just look at the annual interest payment divided by the market value of the debt. Okay, so that brings about that inverse relationship, doesn't it? Uh, in that if the market value of the debt falls, uh, then the interest will go up or the interest yield, the return will go up and vice versa. Okay, however, just be aware that that goes through there, doesn't it? And ignores any profit or loss or likely to be a profit that you generate there on redemption. Okay. Uh, because if you're looking at an interest yield on your zero coupon bonds, it's, it, it's zero, isn't it? Because you have no annual interest. It doesn't matter what the market value of the debt is. Your, your interest yield is zero. You know, but, but we're still getting a return on the debt, aren't we? Because there will be a big gain on redemption of that zero coupon bond at the end of its life. That will, won't it? Okay, so that's where we go through there and look at the redemption yield, or is it sometimes referred to as the, the gross redemption yield? Or is it sometimes referred to as the yield to maturity? Okay, YTM uh, as well. So again, just be aware of the terminology. And what this does is this takes account, doesn't it, of both the annual interest and the gain or loss on redemption. And you've done this already. Again, I repeat, you've seen it in F1, the way in which we work out the gross redemption yield is to work out the IRR of the future cash flows. Okay, so you'll have done that. In F1, looking at debentures uh, with your redeemable debentures. So I can't see that being examined again. But what you might find is that it will be examined by working out the gross redemption yield on a debenture that you've not seen previously uh, or been asked to do, which is there your convertible debenture. Okay, in fact, I think no, Ben, we served me right. I think as part of your weighted average cost of capital calculations, you've had to do uh, in F2, was it? Uh, your WAC calculations that may have included a uh, convertible debenture. Okay, so you need to work out the IRR of the cash flow to work out the gross redemption yield, the yield to maturity. Okay, I will see that in a later video when we look at it for your convertible debentures. Okay, so fear not that there is no example there. Uh, if we just quickly look at debt covenants, do you all know what a debt covenant is or what a covenant is? Yeah, no, I might be sure. I'm not too sure. Essentially, all a debt covenant is, is, is when you are the investor, whether that's an individual investor or whether it is the uh, the bank. OK, you want security, don't you? OK, you're worried about the risk. OK, and the fact that is that we therefore need to make the company attach conditions uh, to the loan so that they will be adhered to. OK. So we want to make sure that if we're talking about debt, that the company has enough cash or profit, shall we say, uh, to be able to pay the interest, which is why we might set a covenant, a rule that states you must maintain an interest cover figure above a prescribed figure. OK, so maybe uh, you have to maintain the interest cover above four. OK, so therefore your profit before interest and tax need to be four times more than the amount of interest expense. OK, if it gets to three, then you've broken the covenant and therefore the loan will be foreclosed. OK, uh, but if it's five, six, seven, eight, you'll be happy with it. Now, where I think examinability can come in here is it can give you the, the debt covenant with regards to interest cover. And you will have to go through there and see whether or not we breach that covenant in taking out a new loan. So you'd have to look at the impact on profits in terms of what extra profits we make. 
but what extra interest do we actually incur? So you need to recalculate the new profit, recalculate the new interest to work out the new level of interest cover and compare it to the old interest cover. OK, uh, and see if we are still beating that debt covenant. Uh, the other one that you've got there is looking at gearing. So again, gearing the level of debt over equity or debt over debt plus equity. Obviously, it would have to be prescribed within a question of how the gearing is measured. But again, you would be worried, wouldn't you, uh, that it does not rise above a prescribed level. Because if you take on too much debt, and therefore there's too much risk. Okay, The interest cover needs to be above a prescribed figure, whereby the gearing needs to stay below that prescribed figure. So you've got to be very careful. Again, examinability is likely to go through there and say, look, this is the level of gearing. This is the current debt. This is the current level of equity. If you take on board this amount of new debt, what does that then do to the level of gearing? And therefore, is that gearing below the level of gearing that is prescribed? OK, again, I think this. There's not much extra to add there. I think the best thing to do is just have a play around with some of the questions that are in the, the study manual or the revision kit of your chosen tuition provider. I think if you're looking for questions, they should usually be pretty straightforward and not cause you too many challenges in the calculation. Just be careful because your interest cover needs to stay above the prescribed level, whereby your gearing needs to stay below the prescribed level. OK. And that can cause confusion. So practice the questions, see how you get on. And if you do have any questions, just ask.